Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to be trying to do a little more hydrodynamics in Kerbal Space Program. You see, uh, between the surfboard and Reddit's recent Kerbal Submarine Challenge, I thought, you know, we should actually really investigate the depths of the oceans in Kerbin. So, I have built this Explorer-type vehicle. The idea is we have four jet engines on it, which will thrust downwards, and in the middle, for good measure, we also have this... Um, solid rocket booster in a capsule. The idea being that I'm going to fire up these engines and it's going to get pushed down deep into the ocean and then at some point I'm going to fire that decoupler and the the escape vehicle will travel to the surface and hopefully pop out of the surface and fly away like a Polaris missile or something. That is the plan. Will it work? Who knows? We're going to find out soon. And the parachute cushion impact. Brilliant. Okay, so now we are ready to go. We just need to now uh, light up the motors, fire them up, and watch as we descend into the depths. I said watch as we descend into the depths. Deeper. I need you to go deeper. Deeper and harder. No, um, this is a problem. It's not going very, very fast. Uh oh, and the jet engines are apparently overheating. This might be because I've got Ferrum Aerospace or Deadly Reentry installed. Um. Yeah, we're not going very deep, are we? In fact, we've just really made our tower a little shorter. Um... Okay, clearly I need some more engines on this thing. Okay, this submarine Mark II. We now have eight engines on this. Light them up and throttle everything up. And now this should work. This should go down twice as fast, although it wasn't actually going very fast, so... Twice zero is zero, right? Oh, there we're going! Lick the butt. Come on. No. No. Come on. Come on. You know you want to go in. You know you want it. Oh, we're starting to overheat again. Well, screw you guys. You're a bunch of lightweights. I'm out of here. Woo. There we go. See, like, that was a Polaris missile that I wanted. Well, anyway, let's uh, try more engines. And the latest generation of the submarine aircraft. Look at that. Look at all those engines on it. Ready? I'm going to just try and point it the right way. I said we're just going to try and point it the right way. Uh, come on. Nope. Come back. I'm just trying to wa oscillate it through to the correct position. I want to be careful opening the parachutes because parachutes can do all sorts of things. Let's uh, just try and use this main middle parachute to slow me down. Or rather... By having that open early, it should twist the whole thing around in the right direction. Hopefully, we shall descend gently into the water. I'd prefer more of the spacecraft to descend softly into the water. Okay, more redesigning, more parachutes, and a very gentle touchdown. Excellent! Now, now we're going to fire up our engines, get ourselves set up, stabilized, throttle up. We'll see, we'll just go at 100%. Hopefully we won't overheat before there. Oh, look at that. Now the intake, I think the intakes might be too floaty. That could be the problem here. Look, we're disappearing beneath the waves. And we have created a submersible. We have at least achieved some small victory here. You can see the, the altitude is currently increasing and actually my velocity is increasing. I'm going sideways for some reason. Let's just straighten ourselves up. I think there might be a... Oh, what the heck? Quick, throttle up. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I was trying to do a get out of here thing while I did it. Well, uh, okay, he survived. He's in the middle of... Oh, why is that tank just kind of sitting around there and not floating to the surface? Everything else seems to be spinning around like crazy. It might be something to do with the, the rotation mod that will maintain rotation. Who knows? All I know is that I have to try again. Okay, once again on the surface after a quick reload. And let's try to keep this thing as straight as... Oh no, it's going off center. No, you don't. Get yourself back on track. I'm trying to fly this nav bot thing through the nav ball manually here. It might actually be, now I think about it, we might have an issue with the engines being forward of the center of mass, which means that their gimbals may be actually turning in the wrong direction. That is a bug which I believe is due to be fixed in KSP 1.0, 
but I cannot confirm or deny. And I'm going sideways again. Nope. There, get it straight. Yes. Look at that. That's us. Submersible. And watch the depth indicator rise, showing our descent into the inky black depths of the Kerbin Oceans. 8 meters, 9 meters, 10 meters, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 meters. And, okay, that's not so good. 15 meter, 14, no, come back, come back, come back. Okay, let's just try jettisoning this. Yes! No, not quite. <laughs> oh, well, at least you survived. That's uh, good to know. And the, that fuel tank is just sitting there beneath the waves, once again, happily spinning out its life. It doesn't want to be part of any of those, you know, metal girders that are floating on the surface. It's way too cool for that. Okay, so another bit of a redesign here. I've moved the jet engines to behind the center of mass to make sure their gimbals work correctly. That's, that's mostly by making sure the center of mass is a little far forward. And yeah, we got a big rocket here. So we'll just fly it out over the ocean. I'm mostly testing in this area off beyond, just beyond the space center. It gets very deep very quickly. You know, it's like 700 meters deep, just a, a few kilometers offshore. Which, uh, well, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty good. I'm not sure what the deepest part of Kerbin's ocean is, but uh, certainly at this point, I'm a long way from being able to explore it. Obviously, I'm using jet engines because the jet engines... Well, okay. So much for that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the jet engines are required because they're more fuel efficient, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if they're destroyed and scattered across the ocean. Now, some quick strutting later, and we have a vastly improved design. You can see the debris from the previous experiment down there, but if we can go deeper out into the ocean, it would be all the better. There we go. Um, okay, we're now kind of stuck on the front here. That's not good. Trying to rotate, trying to roll, try to pitch, pitch y'all, pitch, give me anything here. Um, I guess I have higher drag than the spent stage behind me, and the spent stage behind me has all those winglets and everything to keep it straight. I'm uh, being pushed down towards the water here. Let's try activating one parachute here. See that? So if that one parachute, it might be able to just pull the thing off. I'm trying to push towards it. It's going to deploy anytime soon. Maybe it'll pull me off neatly. No, it didn't pull me off neatly. Okay, Bob Kerman, light up the engines. We're going to go for another deep, deep dive here. The other thing about this design is that it only has four air intakes for all those engines. Largely because at sea level, there's lots and lots of air. Although, obviously, once it goes underwater, there will be less air. But hoping that it's able to run them all. And we're now starting to get down just on jet engine power alone. That's good. Oh, no, although we are starting to get overheated a little... Yeah, Kerbal, Kerbal buoyancy is just insanely high. Everything floats. Oh, it looks like we're having some engine stalls due to lack of intake here. I might have gone a little too, took that a little too far here. Ooh, that's pretty spectacular though. Look at that. <laughs> when they pop, like that side of the spacecraft wants to ride up. Ah, uh, yeah, can't quite get under there. Does not want to work. Now, there are certainly mods that will let me do this, but I'm trying to do this all in stock. And all in stock seems to assume that everything is made of foam. That might explain why Kerbal spacecraft have such uh, terrible aerodynamic properties in stock. Let's try throttling up again. Look, we can submerge the air ducts. And we can just get the feet wet in the capsule there. Come on, we're just going to go full throttle and see if I can at least submerge the capsule before the engines overheat. Oh, look, he can now get a view. He is now submerged on jet engines alone, but clearly not as good as the previous designs. Ah, <sighs> dear, this is a problem. Something of a problem. You know, it's interesting, real spacecraft and aircraft, if they seal up all the necessary, like, holes and stuff, they will actually float really, really well in water. If you have all that air in the cabin, it's kind of hard to make a lot of these sink. Submarines, obviously, have to be designed around submerging, and they have to have ballast tanks that can adjust the level of air and water in them. 
that's how you you know you control your depth to a certain extent. You'll also have hydroplanes to control your attitude in the water. Ballast tanks are really important. Now, actually, any ballast system that's based on air as your displacing uh, entity or whatever is actually potentially dangerous because as the pressure increases, the whole vessel containing your air gets squished, and so the density of the air goes down or goes up. Sorry and your thing can start to sink. If you've ever, like, took a soccer ball or something, or a ball of any sort, and pushed it under the water, right? As you take it and you push it through the surface of the water, the force required goes up until you get just under the water. And then at that point, the force is constant. But as you go deeper, the force required to push a ball down actually decreases because the water pressure squishes everything and the density starts going up, so it becomes less buoyant. Anyway, uh, this thing is uh it's on fire i mean <laughs> so I've, obviously i went into the cheap menu here to try and turn off part damage the idea being i could run these engines without overheating them and they are surviving so far they are overheating despite being underwater whoa whoa what happened oh. <laughs> i think we had a flame out on one of those due to the lack of air <laughs> anyway off he goes bob escaping back to the base to obviously pick out some other and uh, not some other submarine for him to try he really wants to set some records here okay so uh, since I used the cheap menu let's just try infinite fuel now I have a whole bunch of rocket engines here these are L, you know LVT 30s I think and of course a ton of parach ton of parachutes yeah which apparently put too much stress on it let's go back add some struts and try that again Okay, struts are not enough. Fewer parachutes, more struts. Still the same explosions. I think what I have to do is try staging the parachute openings, perhaps. So in theory, by staging, we should reduce the deceleration on it by attaching it to the core of the spacecraft. And then for actual touchdown, we're gonna open a few more parachutes. There we go, that's another wave of parachutes. And we have one more so we can bring our landing speed down to something that should be manageable for this, this uh, well, this pioneering design in underwater space programming. And, okay, apparently we need more parachutes. Brilliant. Uh, back to the design board. The great thing is Bob isn't dying. Well, after a few more visits to the design bureau, we have uh, we have our spacecraft, or, or sorry, our our underwater craft, and watch this go. Now we have turned off infinite fuel for now, but I suspect that we will not get very far. 12, 13, 14, 15 meters. We've broken our record, and we are going straight and true like an arrow, an arrow with a lead point dropped towards the ocean floor. Look at it. Look at it, 30 meters, 32, 33, 34. Okay, and let's detach this this uh, solid rocket booster. Okay, I kind of thought it would go up a little faster like that. I really wanted to get the image of the Polaris missile kind of breaching the water and then firing its engine, but no, nope, we're just gonna have to do it this way. Look at him go, fly back to base. Okay, time to admit some measure of defeat and enable infinite fuel. Bob Kerman, are you ready to go and hit the depths to find out what lurks below? What secrets await us through your tiny little window? This is where I realize I should have brought the lander can. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure the lander can is specced for this kind of pressure. Who knows? Uh, yeah. 1.3 meters per second, 1.2... Uh, this is not going to be a lot, a short, this is not going to be a short journey by any means. I don't know how deep I am because I don't have a uh, Kerbal Engineer here, but I suspect we're maybe 500 meters deep, so this will take a while. And unfortunately, going underwater does seem to confuse the renderer, so as I'm underwater, I don't really see anything else. Everything's black, except I can see the engines. The engine's exhausts are cycling, but as soon as I go above the water, the engine exhausts disappear, but I can see the bottom and I can see the shadow that my vehicle is leaving on the bottom of the, the ocean floor there. Well, it's not really the ocean floor, because I think we're probably still descending down here. Yep, there's a, so I can see the engine exhausts or I can see the shadow. Never both at the same time. Now, thanks to time acceleration and editing, 
We're a long way down, 747, 748, and then we hit the bottom, 748 meters down. This is surely a depth record for Kerbals. Now we've hit the depths, it's time to head back up. Now, my plan here is I'm going to cut the engines and then EVA, and then in theory I should have RCS control. Okay, where is he? I cannot see him in the inky blackness of the depths. Oh, look, he seems to have floated up a little. And I have no control over him, but I do have his light. Ah, I should have brought some lights on this, shouldn't I? Look at... Wow, that actually looks pretty cool under here. It's just... It looks like a giant jet engine or something like that. Okay, so apparently he is floating up less quickly than the spacecraft that is made of metal. Although, to be fair... The human body, once it gets uh, to, to about you know, 20 meters or so, it actually sinks. Well, uh, okay, so let's just reload and instead we'll try try to redo this thing. Uh, we'll just let ourselves float up naturally. Oh, whoa, whoa, explosions at depths, explosions at depths. Um, that's really not supposed to happen. In fact, if you're sufficiently deep, Explosives don't actually work quite as well when you're super deep because the pressure is so much that all they do is produce like gases that expand and they can't expand very much before the ambient pressure makes them shrink again. Wow, okay, this is going pretty nutty. Uh, <laughs> the whole thing is spin I love how all the engines are just continuing to fire because of course I've got infinite fuel so they're just spazzing out and going nuts. Uh, you know, wondering do the engines retain their gimbal setting from the second before I, I, uh, the thing broke up? Why is this thing spinning faster and faster? This is insane. The, the capsule seems to be getting faster and I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm literally not touching it. The water is accelerating this whole thing. Yeah, I think I need to turn off infinite fuel. There we go. Now everything shall naturally ascend to the surface at their own at their own distinct rates. Now we are all but alone in the inky blackness of the ocean. Well, there's a bunch of stuff that's already floated up like a hundred and something meters here. So it's interesting, some of the bits floated upwards at different rates. And uh, yeah, like the, the girders and stuff, which of course the girders, they are open frame lattice structures. You would expect them to have very little in the way of buoyancy, but uh, they seem to do pretty well out of all this. There's a, a decoupler there, which is just like a ring, spinning around like something crazy. <laughs> things flying. I think actually the batteries were the things that came to the surface first, the physics-less parts. Then we have the modular girders. They all come up, knocking everything around, which is pretty funny. You see this giant cloud of girders just spinning around and spazzing around on the surface, like crazy spinny thingies. And, uh, yeah, everything else continues to come to the surface. We, of course, tried to go EVA with Bob, and he's just sitting there, allowing himself to float to the surface, which is the wrong thing to do if you're in super deep water. You will sink, as I pointed out. And now, the hard part is that he's sitting on the surface, and everything's spinning around really fast. So if he wants to get into the spacecraft, well, I guess I have to approach it and try and grab onto the ladder at the right instant. <laughs> <laughs> this could be really funny. I could grab onto the ladder and get kicked off into infinity like a Slingatron. Let's find out what happens here. Hey, Hal, can you stop the pod from spinning? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Actually, I think it's now slowing down every time I bump into it. Oh, look, we have a new way to reduce angular momentum. <laughs> every time he bumps into it, he tends to slow the rotation down. It's trying to grab, grab it, grab it, grab it. It's now almost at a rate of rotation which is acceptable, but the but the ladder is just hard. And now Bob returns to the capsule, a submarine pioneer. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>